For this particular tech tip, I want to focus on the EXS24 sampler. Now, around about 2004, I was using this sampler to manipulate my drum loops pretty much exclusively. So it's, this is kind of, this has a special place for me, this particular piece of software. So I want to show you a few things that it, it can do. Um, this is a remix that I did from that era. I'm just going to play a few bars. Now you might be able to hear that there's filtering, there's a little bit of pitching, there's repetitions, there's stuttering, and there's some multi-tracking as well. And all that was done within the EXS24 environment. So I'm going to show you how, I'm going to show you a few of those techniques. And what I might do, I'm just going to cut up the drum loop from within the track itself. Double click it, make sure the file menu's on. And then we're going to hit this icon here. And that splits the piece of audio by its major uh, transitions, uh, its major transients rather. Some of them you won't need, so I'm going to take them out by double clicking. That's, that's fine for the purposes of this. I'm going to right click and then I'm going to convert it to a new sampler track. You can also do this from the convert menu down here. Now also back in the day, this used to be a much more convoluted process. You used to have to use a piece of software called Recycle and do it outside of the logic environment and then import the, the Rex file that you'd created. You can still do it that way, but this is much easier within the logic environment itself. Once it's thought it through, I'm just going to mute this one out. It's just not quite caught the first one. So I'm just going to focus on one bar. Take that last sound out. We can quantize these bits. And you see what it's actually done. It's just chopped all those sounds up into individual little MIDI hits, which means you've instantly got a whole new range of ways to control that. So let's go, for example, and take a look in the MIDI transform section, which you'll find in the functions menu. And if I go to random pitch, and if I set the note to match the lowest note in the clip, which would be A0. Let's come down so that's on the right on the right slice. And then the top one, which is F sharp one. Okay, I think that's cool. And now because we've set the the range of events to exactly correspond with the range of slices or events that are playing here. If we press select and operate and randomize pitch, wait a minute, I'm just going to give myself a few instances of this, this block of data so that we don't lose the original timing. Let's just see what happens. You'll see that it randomizes the note events. I like that one, so let's hold on to that. And let's play these two together. Now I like the second half of it, so I'm going to cut that in two. I'm going to press L to loop the original loop. And if I was to move it along, maybe just another beat. I'm going to do the same thing again here until I find a bit that I like. I like the start of that, so I'm going to grab that and put it maybe here. Uh, 
and then just to superimpose that over the top. Just this bit maybe. Let's put that in there. Okay, I like that. So I'm just gonna right click and join all that together so I've got a completely new piece of MIDI data. So you see just, just from that simple action of converting an audio piece into a sampler instrument, you're giving yourself great control over the different slices. But you can do much more with this, this stuff as well. If I actually go into the sampler and I'll emulate something that I actually did in that track, you might have heard the little um, transition where the filter seems to come down quite hard. That's actually done within the sampler. The first thing to do is to make sure the automation is set to region, which means it will just operate on this piece of data, not the whole track. And then I'm going to go to touch mode. And I'm going to work on the, um, the filter here. I'm going to bring up the resonance a little bit and the drive just a touch and we'll make it a fat filter as well and by drawing that data in there i can manipulate where i want it to to happen within the region Pretty good. In fact, I'm going to get rid of the first original bit. Now, maybe you don't want that little hit right at the end because that's where the sound is filtering back up again. Let's try that. In fact, we could lose that one too. That's pretty good. But what if you want to get certain hits to be processed or affected or mixed in different ways? Well, the way you do that is to go to the EXS sampler itself. And instead of mono or stereo, we select multi output. And then if I open up the, the dialog for the sampler itself and press edit, I'll see all the slices that are playing in real time. Now there's a... This kind of hit here is kind of upper mid-range and will probably respond quite well to some processing. So in this box here where we have an output, they're all currently set to group, which means they're all going to the same output. If I click and hold, I can change from main output to output 3-4 for this single slice. And then if I close the sampler down, this dialog box will always appear. You're always asked to save changes, which I'll do so. And close the sampler down. And then if I go to the mixer, you'll see that a plus and minus has appeared next to the sampler instrument, which, which wouldn't have been there before. And that's to indicate that it's a multiple output instrument. So if I press plus, I'll get the EXS 3-4 channel. Now watch what happens when I play the loop. Nothing's happening. Hold on. You know, I hit the wrong slice. Hold on. Let me send this to three and four as well. Again. I'll bring down the volume of the main sample. You'll see that just that hit is being sent off to this bus. So I could, for example, pan it. I could add, let's say, some spring reverb, maybe. So 
bring that up. Sounds good. And if I wanted to maybe edit another piece of that slice. That's quite a knocky sound that could respond well to some delay. So I'm going to send that to output five, six, same routine. You have to save it. Let's just get it out of the way. And then hitting the plus sign again, will give me the next output in, in line, so five and six. Let's say I want to add some, some tape delay with a fairly long feedback. kind of add as many there's a ton of things you can do with the EXS24 even though it's a fairly simple sampler its real strength is the fact that it's very transparent it's very integrated with logic and you can do a whole bunch of stuff with this modulation matrix as well I'm not going to cover that in this tip because I'm going to do something very similar in another one with the ES2 but we, we will get back to that um, I used to like also doing pitch stops, which are very similar to filter stops. We could actually combine that with the filter. Let's try that with a bit of automation. You see now it's pitching down within the region. I can copy that and it will copy the automation only specifically within that region. If you switch back to track, you can independently, let's say, work on the filter cutoff on the track automation. And we're here. So let's uh, just plot in some random automation on the track. You'll see that that's not affecting the region specific automation that we've already plotted in. It's working separately. So that's just an introduction to some of the stuff that you can do with a basic audio drum loop within EXS24 using multiple outputs, automated regions, slicing and reordering. Have fun with it. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please We'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.